Hello and welcome to this session on turbulence modeling. Let's ask ourselves when is the flow turbulent? Well, uh, the flow being turbulent is characterized um, by certain questions that we try to answer. So we try to see first of all whether the uh, Reynolds number is beyond a specific value. So for internal flows, the value of around 2300 is when we say that the flow is becoming turbulent, although this number may vary from uh, problem to problem. So it is defined in terms of a length scale, a characteristic length scale, which can differ for different kinds of problems. For external flows along a surface, let's say there's a boundary layer uh, generation which is uh, proceeding further and into the domain, it might happen that beyond half a million Reynolds number, the flow starts becoming turbulent and especially if it's a flow around an obstacle, it becomes uh, turbulent around the 20,000 Reynolds number figure. So these are some of the values which we know from literature. Uh, natural convection problems are to be uh, understood in a different manner though. They are defined uh, in terms of uh, Rayleigh number, Prandtl number and Grashof number. So Grashof number is the ratio between the Rayleigh and Prandtl number. So if this ratio exceeds the value of 10 to the power 9, then we say that the natural convection phenomena is also becoming turbulent. Most of the time it is not the case. Natural convection is a laminar flow, but as let's say the flow proceeds inside a chimney, as it goes up uh, after a beyond a point, it might become slightly turbulent as well. The concept of energy cascading is very helpful uh, to understand turbulence phenomena. So in turbulence what happens is there are larger eddies and these large structures, the larger eddies break down into smaller eddies. They keep on transferring the energy to the smaller eddies and this keeps on happening until a point where the energy gets completely lost as heat. So this energy cascading picture which Richardson proposed in 1922 speaks in terms of a length scale and uh, we'll have a look at this length scale more in detail based on an energy spectrum for uh, turbulence. So we have energy cascade from large scale to the smaller scales. The large scale is where the wavelength, that is um, the size of the eddies, is uh, small. The large scale is where the wave number of the eddies, that is the inverse of the wavelength or inverse of the length scale of the eddies, is um, smaller that is the wave number is smaller than we say it's an integral scale that is the characteristic of the large eddies. In between there is something called the Taylor micro scale. So this is where um, uh, the, the somewhere in between the larger eddies and the smaller eddies uh, the region uh, ri uh, lies here where the turbulence is more or less isotropic. The turbulence is quite mixed together. So this is encountered in highly turbulent flow and even smaller than this is the Kolmogorov scale. The Kolmogorov scale is where um, the, the eddies are quite small and beyond this it can really get converted into heat energy. So if the eddies break down smaller than this. So this is, this is the highest wave number and uh, all these uh, numbers, all these length scales and time scales are defined in terms of some terms like turbulence kinetic energy and the turbulence uh, dissipation rate and the kinematic viscosity of the fluid. So now that we know that turbulence is a very complicated phenomena, chaotic, three-dimensional, let's ask ourselves whether we can actually resolve it, whether we can really predict each and every small eddy's size, each and every small eddy's behavior. So basically the Navier-Stokes equations, they describe both laminar and turbulent. There is no um, uh, special distinction in this case. And if we can actually solve the Navier-Stokes equation exactly, then well, we are done with the problem. We don't have to worry about whether it is laminar or turbulent. But uh, all turbulent flows can also be simulated numerically if I can solve the Navier-Stokes equation. The question is that such direct numerical simulation of the Navier-Stokes equations is quite prohibitive because uh, the, the size of the cell has to be very small to capture the smallest eddy and the time because it's an unsteady phenomena we have to march in time we have to do an unsteady simulation a transient simulation the time step has to be very small so as to accommodate the behavior of the smallest eddy so such a uh, such a kind of analysis in CFD is impossible for real industrial problems and it's not even so necessary so as a practical alternative to these hardware limitations, there are some turbulence models which are available. Now these turbulence models, what they do is they don't actually capture each and every small eddy, but they give you the effect of the eddies. They, they give you the effects in terms of mixing, as I had spoken about it earlier, the turbulence increases the mixing and turbulence causes 
more pressure drop. So if I can have a model which can predict the same thing, it will not actually capture all the eddies, but at least that it will tell me what is the extra pressure drop because of turbulence and what is the enhancement in the mixing characteristics. So then we are done with turbulence. So turbulence can be tackled therefore through a modeling approach because resolving it through direct numerical simulations is quite impossible.